What is going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to learn how to debug C programs using GDB so let us get right into it. Alright so debugging C code is a little bit more difficult and a little bit less intuitive than debugging let's say Python code or Java code. When you have some Python or Java code that you want to debug, you open it up in your IDE, you click on debug, you set some breakpoints before that on the side by just clicking on the lines and then you just run it, you step into lines or functions, you step out of them, you continue, you do all these things by clicking on individual buttons. It's a very intuitive user interface if you know what you're doing as a programmer. You don't need to, to enter any fancy commands. This is not the case for debugging C with GDB. If you want to debug C with GDB in a command line, you have to know commands, you have to uh, look at sometimes assembly code, you have to play around with registers and you have to enter uh, statements. It's a little bit more complicated, but it is very important. Uh, if you're working with C, if you're programming in C, you should know how to debug your code. Um, and also if you're doing something like CTFs, like capture the flags, uh, you should know how to work with GDB either to debug C code or to just analyze uh, binaries to analyze uh, assembly code or something like that. This can be quite useful. So let us get started with a very simple example. We're going to create a file here main.c and we're going to say include uh, stdioh and we're going to say here int main is going to be the main function. And uh, we're going to have a very simple program, but we're going to have a program that will have a problem. And this problem is something we want to debug. Now, the problem that we're going to cause is um, is caused or will be caused by the floating point um, representation of computers. I have a video already on this channel where I show you or I explain to you why 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 is not exactly 0 0.3. Uh, I did a Python example. So if you want the explanation on why that is, check out that video. Otherwise, um, it's not the it's not the core of this video. So we're going to use it as an example. Uh, but the idea is that we want to build a program naively that we think will work, then we're going to find out it doesn't work, but we can't figure out why, uh, just by looking at the code. So we're going to go into GDB to find uh, the root cause of this problem. So we're going to say here, uh, we have a long double, um, which is going to be the start, we're going to have a long double, which is going to be the end, and we're going to have a long double, which is going to be the uh, step. So the step size, you could say. Um, and the idea is just that the user will input all these three values. So we're going to say here print f please enter start something like that. And we're going to do this for end and step size as well. And we're going to say here just scanf percent capital LF because we're having a long double here, um, backslash or actually not backslash and sorry, and start. So we're going to point to the start address. We're just going to have this simple program here. By the way, if you don't know what I'm doing right now, you should probably watch C tutorials first before you talk about or look at debugging because uh, I'm going to assume that you know what pointers are, I'm going to assume that you know what data types are with uh, what all these statements are. Uh, I'm not going to explain basic C here because this is something that um, you learn after you know the basics of C. So we have start end and we have step here. We entered these values and then the program what it does is it says while the start is not equal to the end. While this is the case, we're going to say, uh, I don't know, print F, for example, percent LF backslash N, and it's going to be just the start value. And then we're going to say start plus equals step. So we provide a start, we provide an end, and we provide a step size. And then all we do is we increase start by that step size with each iteration. And once start reaches the end exactly. So once start is exactly the same as end, we stop. So of course, the step size has to be chosen in a way that it doesn't skip on the end. So if we have start a zero, and end 200, we want to have a step size of one, this would be fine. We don't want to have a step size of 
uh, something that never reaches 200. So for example, 150 would be a bad step size because it would step to 150 and then to 300 it would skip 200 so it would not um it would not fulfill that condition it would not break that condition ever so it would just stop now of course you could if you're intelligent just say okay greater than or equal to end but we want to cause some problems so we're not going to do that and then in the end i'm going to say return zero that is that and we're going to say here now gcc main c dash o main out to compile this whole thing and then i'm going to say now main dot out and i'm going to enter something here i'm going to say okay zero is the start 200 is the end one is the step size there you go the program works without problems okay so in this case it worked perfectly we just increased by one we get the floating point uh notation here in this case because we had uh yeah, I mean, we had integers as start, end, and step size, but still we have the data type uh, double. But now what we can do is we can run the same program again and try something else. We can try um, something like we start at zero, we're going to go to two, and the step size is 0 0.1. Now, what the hell is happening here? Those values were not really problematic, were they? So we had zero, we want to go to two, and we want to have a step size of 0 0.1. Isn't that okay? I mean, isn't that fine? At the end of the day, I just increased by 0.1 and after 20 times I should be at two, but it doesn't happen. It never terminates. And uh, maybe if I run this fast enough, so zero to 0 0.1, and if I somehow can go up, okay, I don't think that I can go up. No, it would take too long. But uh, you will see that there's not really a problem because we're going to see that there is uh, 2.0 being reached, but for some reason it still doesn't terminate. So this is something that we might want to look at unless we understand it. Of course, we can also do the unprofessional way and just print all the time. But if you want to professionally debug, what you want to do now is you want to open this program with GDB. So GDB is a command line tool. You want to install it on Linux by saying sudo apt install GDB and um, then you can use it. In my case, it's already installed. And before we use GDB, we need to make sure that we compile our program in the right way. So what we want to do is we want to say uh, compile it, but also uh, in a way that we have the debugging information there so that we can in uh, GDB link the actual binary to the source file so that we can uh, set the breakpoints at the code lines and don't have to go through the assembly code. So what we can do here now is we can say uh, gcc main.c dash o main dot out and then dash g. This is what we have to add here. Um, and then we can say gdb main dot out. This opens now here the new gdb software. So you can see this is now the thing that we're going to work with. And this is the debugging environment. This is not the same as a fancy IDE. This is a command line debugging software, uh, but we can learn how to use it. So first of all, what we can do is we can say list provided that we have the debug information. And if we say list, you can see this is the source code here uh, that is linked to this main.out file. So this is actually the main.c file that led to the main.out file. And here we have the line numbers. So if we want to set breakpoints, we can specify the individual line numbers. Um, so for example, where will we set the breakpoint? Obviously here, because here's the check that does not trigger. So I want to know what's happening here in this while loop. So I, I want to say break 16. Break 16 means now I have uh, a breakpoint here. So before we run this now, before we start with the actual debugging, I want to show you, for example, that we can say disassemble main in order to get the assembly code of the main uh, of the main function. So this here is the assembly code that is our program. Uh, just wanted to show you that so you can also play around with that if you want to. Uh, but in this case, what do we have here? One, two, three, one. This should be that line here. So one, two, three, one is the line. Uh, which we have here at line 16. Uh, but now we have a breakpoint there. So we can actually run the program, we can say run, and then it runs the actual program here um, in GDB. But once we reach that breakpoint, it will break and let us analyze the memory, analyze the individual variables. So I can say here now again, for example, 
Um, if I want to do the proper example where I start with zero and go to 200 with the step size of one, you can see now I have this breakpoint one uh, at this line. And now what I can do, for example, is I can say print start and I can see, okay, start is right now zero. And so print end is right now 200. Obviously, this will not trigger. So I can just say uh, continue and then uh, it will go on until the end. So uh, what I can also do is I can um, I can run the whole thing again and I can say again, uh, I mean, do we have the breakpoint still? I hope so. Yeah, we have it. So I can say step and I can say step and so on and so forth. Uh, but what I actually want to do now is I want to see why it doesn't work in the example. I want to see why it doesn't trigger uh, this this condition with with the example that we did before. So I'm going to run this again. I'm going to say zero is the start, two is the end and 0 0.1 is the step size. So here I can say again, print start and I can say print end. OK, this is what I want to have. I can also print step by the way here. Uh, now you can see here already that I see what the problem is. I can see here that 0 0.1 is actually this number here. So this might already be an indicator that this could be something that's going wrong here. Um, but essentially, I can say now continue. Okay, it seems like I chose a bad breakpoint. So let's go again into list main and uh, we chose the breakpoint 16, which is the while statement. And it seems like this is only executed once. So if we want to uh, to stop to have a breakpoint at each iteration every time we should uh, place it somewhere in here. So let's go with 17. We're going to say break 17 and we should delete. So I think we can do no, uh, we, we should be able to say delete one because breakpoint one is one and breakpoint two now, which I created here at line 17 uh, is breakpoint two. So if I say delete one, this should create the first, uh, this, this should delete the first breakpoint. And if I now run this again, by saying run and then y for yes, uh, for starting it again from the beginning. And now I say zero and two again and step size 0 0.1. Um, now I can do the same thing again, I can say print start, whatever print end, and now I can just say continue. And then it's going to go uh, one iteration is going to come back to this point. So now I have another breakpoint. And then I can say again, print start. And you can see already again, this is uh, maybe a problem, but then we can do this all the time. So we can say continue, 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 continue. And then somewhere at some point, I should be able to see what the problem is. So maybe here now print start, uh, start now has the value 2.000 whatever two two. Whereas if I say print end, you can see that this is two. This is the value two. That is the problem. This is why this doesn't trigger. And if I now say continue and I print start again, it now has a different value and it goes up and up and up. So the condition is never uh, violated. It's always fulfilled. So we have essentially a while true and this is an endless loop. Now, the example is not really that important. You don't need to understand if you don't understand uh, why this happens. I have again, as I said, a video on this. But the point is now to understand how you can debug in GDB, you can run the program, you can set breakpoints, you can print variables, and you can do a bunch of other things you can step uh, line by line. Um, this is this is one thing that you can do here. Uh, you can continue as I said, so uh, as I showed you, so continue basically means go on with the code until you reach another breakpoint. Um, what we can also do is we can look at the registers, we can say info rec, and this shows you the content of the individual registers. And you can also print the value here. So you can say print, for example, dollar RSI, uh, to get the value of the RSI register here. So this one, this is now the I think the decimal representation, I can also say print slash was it x for the hexadecimal, there you go. And we can also treat an address like um, we can treat an address like an address and get the actual content. So I think this is done with x slash s. And then we need to specify the address. Now I'm not sure if we can find something here. But there you go. So here you have at this position here at this address, you have the following value, in this case, enter step size. So this seems to be the address of the string uh, that 
we are uh, that it, that is stored here. So the string is um, at a certain address. This is the address that the string is stored at, and this register has this value in there. So that's one thing we can do. We can also use the clear command to clear all the breakpoints. You can see now breakpoint two was deleted. So if I run this whole thing again, and if I enter zero to zero point one, we're not going to have any breakpoints. So we have here again the endless loop. By the way, Control C. Um, allows you to terminate. So with control C, you can send uh, an interrupt uh, signal here. But that is your development environment. Now I'm not going to cover all the commands here because you can look up a cheat sheet. There are a lot of things that you can do with GDB and I myself always have a cheat sheet open up. Uh, because you don't have just some buttons that you can click, you have to use commands, you have to say stuff like list main, and then you uh, place a breakpoint here, you place a, break, a breakpoint here using the break command and all that. So this is something that you can do. Uh, this is how you do things in GDB, you don't do it with a GUI, you don't have a debug button, you don't have um, the clicking at the line numbers to set breakpoints uh, features here. But yeah, that is how you do the basic debugging in GDB. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.